excited about this word today because, as I said earlier, I'm learning how to trust, and I'm learning the pattern of the enemy. He used to be kind of stupid. He was really predictable. So you, you need to look at the patterns of which he attacks you. He really comes in the same way. He comes in that way in pattern, in families. That's why it's so important to know what your spiritual legacies are. We know what our, our physical legacies are. Some, because sometimes medicine just demands that. When you go to the hospital, they ask you, do you have a history of heart disease in your family? Do you have a history of diabetes in your family? People demand that you know something about your history. But people don't demand that you know something about your spiritual history. But it's just as important because the enemy is pretty stupid. He's pretty predictable. What he did to your mama, he'll do to you. And what he did to your mama's mama, he'll do to your child. So knowing something about your spiritual history can not only prepare you, but it can prepare your children on how to fight the enemy. And because he loves us, he wants us to be prepared and he wants us to be equipped. So know something about your spiritual history so that you can not only prepare yourself, but you can prepare your family. This was a full uh, ad on. Uh, ad on. That was for free. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But I, I, and I'll just share this. This, this, this was totally for free. I, I was going to tell you about how I'm learning the patterns of how he, the enemy attacks me during the times where God is using me to minister. For, for myself personally, for my family, I have come from a long line of tangentials. My mother's mother mother was a teenager. My grandmother was a teenager. My mother was a teenager. And somewhere in my teen years, I heard the Lord say, this is going to be your life. Now, I don't know as a teenager what, really what to do with that, but I know I clearly heard God said, this will end with you. And it did. I wasn't a teenager. My daughter wasn't a teenager. There was a turnaround in our spiritual legacy and history because I became aware of a pattern of the enemy and I became aware of it. Lord, don't let that happen to me. And as I became more uh, mature as a believer, I prayed for my dad. I prayed for my granddaddy who's yet to be. But I put out prayers for the next four generations against teenage mothers because that's how the enemy has attacked my family. It's just one way. So look at your family, and don't, don't, uh, there's no shame to this. You shame the enemy. We overcome him with the words of our testimony. Some of us are so concerned about what people think about us that we're defeated by the enemy because we don't overcome him with the words of our testimony. The words never come out. We have a shame. There is no shame. There is no shame. Shame him. Defeat him with the words of your testimony. Prepare yourself and your family, and your family that's yet to be for those things in which the enemy has come against your family. What I've seen as a pattern this week is that he begins to really distract you and try to literally destroy you. The last two weeks, the, 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 he, as soon as I found out uh, the opportunity to come and, and, and minister the word here, I came down with the flu. And the first thing that the flu attacked was my voice. I began to lose my voice not as very hoarse and strong as talking. And really, literally, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm up here on the um, talking like seat because I'm like, Lord, I can't talk through this, through this um, uh, service. And he has really calmed the tongue because he can do that. The flu wasn't enough. Monday, he attacked my sight. I ended up scratching my cornea in a very fluke accident ended up in the ER for six hours, literally unable to see. Couldn't see my phone, couldn't see my hand. Um, um, it was the grace of God that let me drive home from the ER like that, <laughs> but he got me home. But uh, I couldn't see. And I began to say, Lord, how can I study? I can't even read. I can't even write. I cannot see. And the Lord said, the enemy struck your sight but he can't touch your vision. 
He struck my sight. He took my sight. He blinded me literally for three days. For three days, I could not see. But God said, for three days, I'm going to write what the words are that I have for you to speak on the tablet of your heart. Because he can strike your vision, your, your sight, but he can't touch your vision. So know that the enemy has parameters. And now I'm learning to prepare myself better when God has an assignment for me because I know the patterns of the enemy that I'm seeing. He begins to strike at my health. And I just need to have people pray better prayers of hedge of protections around me and pray better prayers for myself because he is a defeated foe. And so this morning, I am so excited because I understand this word is so necessary that he struck my sight for three days, but God's word will prevail and it will go forth this morning. So I'm going to sort of just piggyback off of the word that was deposited in this house last week. If you were not here, I just really urge you to get that CD. The Lord knew who he sent. He knew who the first voice was going to be and what seed was going to be deposited in his house. And he chose Pastor Leon to do that. And so there are things that in the message from Pastor Leon I will continually refer to because he deposited the first fruit seeds for for a new dawn in the house last week. And to be on one accord, you need to hear that message. But the great prophetic word from Pastor Leon that I, he started with this, and it was almost like the last thing that he said. I think he said two other statements after this. But he prophetically admonished new dawn to hear that the Lord has prepared new dawn Christian village for greatness. He said, prepare for greatness. And I mean, he, just, he, he had a lot of things that he was saying, but as he was coming to an end, it was those three words. He repeated, prepare for greatness. He declared greatness is on the inside of you, and it's on the inside of me. And so today, I am reminding you of the seed that was planted in this house. Prepare for greatness. I don't care what your circumstances look like. I don't care what the realities look like. Because the man of God also said, you've got to learn to line up your realities and your facts with the truth of God. Because the realities and facts will say, um, uh, uh, I can't see. But the truth of God says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And God said, I'll write it on your heart if you can't write it on a piece of paper. That's truth. I would have been defeated if I stopped at the circumstances and the reality of my facts. You have got to learn how to line your realities and facts with truth. Truth will always, always, always trump facts. Always. Speak the word of God to your realities and to your situation. Stand by faith on the truth of God. And the truth of God is if you're in this house, prepare for greatness. The opposition will come, but God will fight the enemy. And God will send the answer, and God will show up if you prepare for greatness. There's a, a, Mark, I don't know if you the first slide for great. I am a teacher by nature. I am a pastor and a preacher, but I love that that gifts in in, in, um, Ephesians says pastor, teacher. I I have been discipled by a pastor, teacher. Bishop Ulmer is a great teacher, and so it flows out of me. I love words. I am just a word freak. I I am on my dictionary app all the time. So when I wanted to look up the definition of great, and so that we're on one accord, the definition said is unusual, remarkable, exceptional, outstanding, important, highly significant, favor, and large in size or number. You can pick any one of the words and decide that's, what, that's your, your mantle. I'm going to pick favored. That's good. Outstanding, exceptional. That's what God is preparing us for. Don't let this just be mechanical. Don't just say, well, I went to church and the word said prepare for greatness. Prepare for greatness. Get that definition in your spirit. Because despite your realities and your facts, this is what the Lord has decreed for this house. And I really believe where it says the large in size and number, 
these chairs are going to begin to be filled. You're going to see more people coming to get the word of God, not to just show up. There's a lot of people that show up to churches just to be in the number. It's the cool place to be. It's the hip church to be at. But God is going to fill these seats so people are going to be hungry for the word of God. There's going to be an increase in the size and number. You are a remnant people, and the Lord will always build on his remnant. So expect the numbers to increase. Keep these putting these chairs out. Don't decrease because maybe there was a smaller number. Expect them. Two years ago, I was at a revival in um, Tanzania, and um, there was a pastor there from the Congo, and the day that I went, uh, there were a lot of, uh, there were just a few chairs, and the chairs, there was empty seats. And so the pastor said, well, did you expect the people? And the, the, the visiting pastor asked that, and they said no. He says, well, tomorrow I want every seat that you own to be out in, 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 and set out with the expectation that the Lord is going to send the people. If you put out 10 people, your expectation is too small. 10 chairs, your expectation is too small. Expect great. The word of God said, great, prepare for greatness. Believe it enough to prepare. As they set those chairs out the next day, I didn't get to go back for that service, but I was told that the place was filled to capacity because the expectation shifted. It, they shifted, just as we did in our prayer time. You've got to shift and expect what the word of God says to be, reveal, uh, to be fulfilled. I'm not here today as a cheerleader. I'm not here today as a motivational speaker. I'm here today on assignment to water the seeds that were deposited in this house by Pastor Leon. Prepare for greatness was the first word that the Lord deposited in our spirits on the first Sunday of the year. The enemy cannot defeat us. He cannot defeat us. He is a defeated foe. You really have to get that in your head because he cannot defeat you. When the Lord has declared and decreed something over your life, expect it. Wait for it. Fight for it. Press for it because he cannot defeat us. The enemy knows he cannot defeat us, but he knows he can cause us to default. So if we give up, if we uh, 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 get so discouraged or so depressed, we, def we are defeated by default, by our own fault, our own surrender. I'm telling you today, get this in your spirit. We are being prepared for greatness. Don't give up. Don't lose heart on your dreams, your hopes, your visions, your aspirations, your relationships. This is a time to stand on the word that greatness is in your future. Prepare for it. Expect it. Know that truth trumps the realities and the facts of your life every time. And as an act of our will, we're going to consecrate ourselves unto God at the top of this new year. I want us to look at consecrate. Consecrate is a fancy uh, ecclesiastic word, which simply means to set apart. And so at the top of this year, we're going to draw close to God in the first few days of this year as a sign that we are setting aside the first fruits of the year. If the first, uh, this is a principle that Pastor Leon talked about too. If the first fruit is blessed, the rest is blessed. Pastor Hines uh, reminded us of the uh, biblical principle of tithing. And he told us if that 90 per, if that 10% is blessed and set apart, the rest is covered. The 90% is blessed. If you go back and look in Malachi 3, it talks, it's the only place uh, at, that, where it talks about giving where the Lord says, test me, try me, let, let me prove this to you. You set aside that 10%. I'm going to rebuke the devourer from coming against your 90%. Test me. Try me. Watch me. Only place in scripture where the Lord says, try it. Test me. You set aside that 
that 90% is blessed. And one day I want to give you my testimony on that because I did test him and I did try him and, and all hell broke loose when I tested and tried him. I, I got a foreclosure notice and I'm like, Lord, I'm testing you and trying you and believing you and um, they about to take my house. And uh, they were going to take my house on a Monday. I had a foreclosure notice. And I went to church on Sunday. And see, that's what you got to do. The enemy gets you so discouraged. He gets you so dismayed. He gets you so depressed. You stay up in the house. And I know when I'm in that kind of trouble, I need to be in this house. I need to be under the word of law. I don't care if I look toe up, I'm going to show up. Because I need a word from God. I need something to get me past that kind of movement. When you're a single mom and somebody's saying, I'm coming to repossess your house on Monday, you better know I was in church on Sunday. And I didn't know what to do. But I knew to get up under his word. And as I got up under his word, I spoke to one of my prayer partners. You got to be able to, to, to find safe people to tell your stuff to. It's, it's in that fellowship of revealing yourself. The enemy wants to, he, he destroys long rangers. He looks for Lone Rangers. So when you are able to link up with somebody else in prayer, in confidence, in safety, and let them know what's going on with you, it, you defeat the enemy. You already just, just expose the plans. And I got to, with one of my prayer partners and let him know what was going on. I said, I'm going to go give this testimony. But now somebody may need to hear this. Um, that I needed five thousand uh, dollars was then, which is I love numbers. Five is the number for grace. I needed five thousand dollars to grace me to say, stay in my home, and um, uh, that day, uh, someone said to me, "You have been a faithful tither." Now remember, I had begun to tithe because God said, "Test me, try me," and um, He says, "You are a faithful servant in this house." And um, the next morning, I was able to pick up a five thousand dollar check. And I was able to get it down to my house, uh, to my, my uh, lender, and saved my house, <laughs> okay? Because God said, that's your house. It will not be taken away from you. It will, it will be sold. It will not be taken. And we stayed in that house another 10 years, and, and I was able to sell it. But the testimony is, test God, try God. I couldn't start tithing right at 10%, I, but God said, start at 1%. Start at something and just be consistent at it and grow until you can get to the best. A lot of times we get so discouraged and it's real. It's like, I'm, we don't know where the 10% is going to come from. Start where you can. God will bless what you do and he will take care of it. And he saved my house. He did. And so I thank God for this principle. I believe in the principle of first fruit. So we're going to consecrate ourselves at the top of this year as a sign that we are setting ourselves aside, apart to prepare ourselves for the greatness that the Lord has prepared for us. We have to prepare for what he's already prepared for us. And so we're going to set aside this time. Uh, look, can we look at uh, the next slide on James 4? What does that look like? What does it look like to set aside? What does it look like to consecrate and prepare? The Lord took me to James 4, um, uh, and I want to look at this in several versions. I do that a lot when I study. I, I, I read, I reread the scripture, I reread the scripture. I look at the scripture in several different verses, and we don't have the message up here, but that's the final verses I'm going to uh, read it in. The message is a good uh, tool. It's not a primary study tool. Uh, no, 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 no. We're going to do this later. It's not a primary study tool, but it's a great tool to give you just, I, I call it my straight to the, to the quick version for you to understand what's being said. But as we look at James 4, 8, in the New King James Version, is that the first one? It says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Then I'm going to look at it in the New Living Translation. It begins to get clearer and clearer. New, uh, King James is lovely, but I can't, I, I can't, I got to chew up something a little bit more. I mean, I love to read it in the King James, but I need to get something that's a little more contemporary. The New Living Trans uh, uh, Translation is a great tr uh, contemporary translation. It says, come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. And then the message version, which I'll read to you. It says, say a quiet yes to God, and he will be there in no time. You show up, 
God will show up. Quit dabbling in sin. Purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. Hit bottom and cry your eyes out. The fun and games are over. Get serious. Really serious. I love that version. It just, it just cuts to the chase. New Don, God is calling us to get serious. Really serious. It's a new year. He has decreed it's time to prepare for greatness. It's time for us to get serious, really serious, and prepare ourselves for that which he has prepared for us. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I was so ready when the Lord began to, I believe, I, I'm seeing this in the kingdom. It, uh, many, many churches were talking about shifting at the end of the year. And I am so ready for a shift. There were things that came at me in 2013 that I pray I never see or experience ever again. I stepped into this new year in a new position with a desire to receive all that God has for me and to leave behind my past. Some of you, sorry, it's getting hot in here. I am menopausal, and so I'm going to work through these hot flashes. But some of you need to know your past will try to paralyze you. You have got to press, press towards the mark, press past your past knowing that God has something great for you. You stood here this morning saying, Lord, I'm shifting. I'm moving into that which you have prepared for me. And I just began shouting as I came into this year thinking about a shift. Pastor Hines told us that, that um, greatness is on the inside of us. So just Get that. The greatness is already in you. Forget those things that are behind you. Press past that discouragement. Press past that voice that tells you it won't happen. Press past that, that voice that says you're too old. The season is gone. Press past that voice that says you, you, you'll never make enough. Press past that voice that says you'll never be loved again. Press past whatever you've got to press past to be able to receive the seeds of greatness that the Lord says are already in you. And I love what Pastor uh, uh, Leon said. He said, some of us, and this is me, we look for that suddenly blessing. But he said, most blessings are going to come to us through process, through seed, time, and harvest. It's not the suddenly blessing, it's the it came to pass blessing. <laughs> so we got to know how to hold on in the process for the it came to pass blessing. The suddenly blessings are wonderful. It's, a, it, it, it's, it's awesome when the Lord just shows up and does it. But for the most part, it's a it came to pass. I had a friend who preaches that word and she, she puts a different emphasis on it. She says, it came to pass. So it came, but it came to pass. And in that passing, God built your faith. In that passing, God built your, 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 uh, uh, your strength. In that passing, it came for a reason, but it came to pass. So know that our trials and tribulation, they will come, but God will use that. Those are the very things that he will use to prepare you for the greatness. A lot of us want greatness, but we, our character cannot uh, sustain us for the greatness that God is going to take us. So he's got to do some character work. He's got to do some work on the inside of our spirits. It came to pass to prepare you for the greatness. Get a hold of that. Get a hold of that in your spirit. I loved what the word, uh, man of God said last week. Our anointing is released through that process, through that pressing. We don't get anointed by not going through anything. And so if God is preparing you for greatness, you're going to go through some things because he's got to prepare you for greatness. That anointing that lies within us comes out through our pressing. Our greatest problem 
It's often the greatest path to that preparation for greatness that the Lord has for us. Gain a new perspective. Shift your perspective on your pain. Thank you, Lord. That was some fresh rain, and that was probably for me. <laughs> Shift your perspective on your pain. Shift your perspective on your problem. It came to pass. It's the very thing that God is using to prepare you for your greatness because it's been declared and decreed. Prepare for greatness. Greatness is in you. That problem, that issue, that thing, it came to pass to prepare you for your greatness. Shift your perspective. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And so we're going to do this. We're going to shift through a time of a focus, a time of consecration and concentration. We're going to have the Lord put on my heart four key areas to do that. We're going to be doing, done through giving, praying, fasting, and worship. And before you think that I just came up with these four things, Pastor Leon said everything that we do is going to be done on, on, with the basis of Scripture as our foundation. The Lord took me to Matthew 6. Um, Matthew 5 and 6, and I believe even 7, is a, a continuous um, teaching of Jesus. 5 is on the Beatitudes. Uh, 6 is he talks about just what we're going to focus on, 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 on how uh, to develop that, that, that uh, devotional life and moving away from the world and moving closer to God. When Jesus taught on fasting, he taught on this four combination. I call it a concentrated mix. He didn't just teach on fasting. He taught on giving, praying, fasting, and worship. And so we're going to use that Matthew uh, 6 uh, ch uh, uh, chapter as our foundation for what we're going to do. The word of God will serve always, and that's what I love about this house. It serves as the biblical foundation of truth and the basis from which we move. For, so for the next 21 days, consecration and concentration, we will not default we will not be defeated. We will align the realities of our facts and our realities with the truth of the word of God because we are shifting into greatness. God sent his servant last week to deposit that word in us, and now we're going to prepare for greatness in 2014. You have shifted. I have shifted. doesn't matter what our circumstances are. We have shifted. We have to be confident. This is one thing that Pastor Leon said. We have to be confident in God's ability to prosper us, that God's ability to shift us, God's ability to move us into that place of greatness that he has prepared for us. The confidence is not in our own ability to succeed. It is in God's ability to prosper us. And so shifting our perspective of who's doing this, Yes, we've got to show up. Yes, we've got to do some work. But it is God's ability to prosper us. It's God's ability to shift us and move us into that place that he has prepared for us. So as we're drawing close to God over these next 24 days, and we, we looked at James 4, 8, which told us what that means. We're going to say, get a quiet yes to God, knowing that he will show up and show out. We're going to end our fun and games. We're going to get serious, really serious, and we're not going to default this thing in 2014. Part of our getting serious is going to be our fasting. And I, I saw the, the um, slide up there on fasting. Last year when I, joined, when I came to uh, New Dawn, we were, we were beginning a fast. And there was a little bit of confusion. Um, I, it, I've been at Faithful Central for almost 30 years, and, and we always do a fast, a consecration time at the top of the year. And we usually do the Daniel fast. But when I came to New, New Dawn, it, was, it just wasn't clear. And God said he wanted to give us some clarity on what spiritual fasting is. Spiritual fasting is always about food, okay? You got to understand that. It's a good thing to turn off the TV. It's a good thing to turn off the, the uh, cell phone uses. It's, uh, and because remember, we're not only talking about consecration, we're talking about concentration. So those things that take your time away, where you can't concentrate on hearing what God is saying, it's good to reduce those. But if you only reduce those, that's just a good decision. 
That's not a spiritual fast. Okay, a spiritual fast is always about food. The definition of sp biblical fast is to restrict food for a spiritual purpose. So I want us to be on one accord, and I want us to really understand what fasting means and what spiritual fasting is and what it isn't. So if you're restricting just your time or social media, it's a good decision, but it's not a biblical fast. Biblical fasts always address the issues of spirit, soul, and body. And one of the things you need to know about fasting is it was never commanded that we fast. There was never a command in, in, from Old Testament to New Testament that we, that we fast. But there are examples of fasting all the way through from Old Testament to New Testament because there's benefits to fasting. The Hebrew wrote word for fasting, I'm not going to give you the words, but I want you to know because it goes from Old Testament to New Testament. The Hebrew word for fasting means to cover the mouth. You cover the mouth, food's not going in. Spiritual fasting always deals with some abstinence or refraining from some food. The Greek work for fasting means actually to abstain from food. So a spiritual fast will always involve abstaining or restricting food in some way. And as I was studying, the Lord was telling me, it's really powerful. The first sin, the first temptation, the first fall, it came into the world involving what? Food. Okay. The mouth and food. Food is powerful. We need it to sustain our life. And the enemy knew I could come. I can bring the first fall, the first sin, the first temptation to sin, uh, through food. So it just makes sense that abstaining or refraining from some kind of food is a part of a spiritual fasting of drawing closer to God. Allow, we're going to make a loud no to our stomach so we can make a quiet yes to God. I love that new, uh, the message version. We're going to do a loud no, a sacrifice, a giving up of something, so we can say a quiet yes to God. Now, there's three types of fast. I didn't do a slide on this because I don't want to go into all of this. You might want to make this your part of what you do during your time of study during this next 21 days. There are three types of fasting mentioned in the Bible. There's an absolute fast, which I have never done and pray the Lord never calls me to do. Okay, that's absolutely what Moses did up on the mountain. No food, no water, 40 days. Uh, we don't ever want to do that, So, but... Uh, but that's a fast. The next one is a normal fast. I believe that's what Jesus did when he was tempted in the, in, in the uh, wilderness. And the third is a partial fast. That's what we're going to be focusing on. That's a Daniel fast, which you may do in totality and you may do in par partiality. A partial fast is just that. You're going to give up some food, something that you desire or crave, something that's not going to make you sick, you know, but a lot of times you have to say, do this under the, uh, particularly if you have any medical issues or problems, do this with the advice and counsel of your doctor. And we are saying that. But I can tell you, without my medical degree, with my online CVS, you go to the, um, what's that doctor online? <laughs> with my degree in that, that if you give up coffee for the next 21 days, you will not die. If you give up alcohol for the next 21 days, you will not be medically compromised. So there is something that you can give up that you don't have to get a medical clearance from. It's that thing that you desire. It's that thing that you crave. You know, that my, God already told me, I, I will fight to the death over a potato. Well, me and potato got to part ways for the next 21 days. And y'all need to pray for me because I don't think I've ever not had a potato of some sort for 21 days. It is truly my weakness. But I don't have to check my doctor. I don't have to call him. I know if I want to draw close to God in this next 21 days, he's already clearly defined what I need to give up. And he'll do that for you too if you ask him. So the Daniel fast is a, a simplified version of it. It's no meat, no sweets, no alcohol. And, and um, we're going to send you some things through the email. Um, you can go online. You can Google Daniel Fast. I have an insert that, uh, I mean, an a email that I sent to Tracy that I'm going to get out to all of you guys. I have a book. Tracy, I don't know if you have that book that I love. Um, God gave this to me uh, maybe at the end of the year, even before we talked about the fast. It's called the Daniel Fast, and there are devo daily, 21 days of daily devotions I'm going to have sent out to each of us. They're great devotions. 
and their recipes. There were some really great recipes in here. And so I picked this up at the end of the year, not even knowing that we were going to be going through this fast. But God had already prepared me, and we'll make some of this available to you guys as well. But giving up Daniel fasting is just giving up something that you desire, that you crave. Your spiritual fast should include giving up some type of drink or some type of food. If you're just giving up TV, it's a good thing. You'll, you, you'll probably hear a little more from him, but that's not a spiritual fast. Bishop Omar also says, this, this, this permeated my spirit. If you want to see God do something he's never done before in your life, you do something you've never done before in your life. I'm going to say that again. If you want to see God do something in this next 21 days that you, he's never done before in your life, then you do something you've never done before in your life. It's time to get serious, really serious. Greatness is in us. He's preparing us for that. That thing, it came to pass, but we've got to be prepared for the greatness that's in us. And so I'm getting serious, really serious, and I'm going to do the Daniel fasting, get before the Lord, Ask him what it is that you need to give up so that you can be very serious, really serious, and hear from him to prepare for greatness. We are symbolically setting this 10% of time aside so that the rest of our year will be blessed. I don't know about you. I'm willing to give up 21 days for the rest of that. I can't do math, but that's probably about 340-something days. <laughs> I'm willing to give up 21 to have the, re the next 345 blessed by God. Now, don't, that's not, I, I would be lying to you to say that that means it's all going to be perfect and dandy. No, we, have, we are equipped for warfare. It means that God said, in the end, we win. It means that in this year, if you expect greatness, greatness will come. But it means that you've got to prepare for that, believe for that, and put yourself in a position to receive that. I could have lost my house if I didn't put myself in a position to protect my house. The Lord protected my house from the devourer by what I did. Let's put ourselves in the position of first fruit blessing. 21 days so that the remainder of the year is covered by his blessing. Do something you've never done before so that you can see God do something he's never done before. It's time to make a sacrificial no to something, a loud no to something that you love and crave in order to say a quiet yes to God so that we can prepare our hearts, our heads, and our lives for the greatness that he has for us in 2014. You want to do that, New Don? You ready to prepare for greatness? Oh, it doesn't really sound like it. Let me hear that you're ready to prepare for greatness. It's in you. God has decreed and declared that word. We, I don't know about you, I refuse to default. He cannot win. He's defeated. But he can discourage me. I can give up. I can say, oh, yeah, that's all really good, but you don't know my circumstances. No, line your circumstances up with the word of God, with the truth of his word. He fought the prince of Persia for 21 days because the answer came. God said, I answered that on the first day. We just had a little work to do before we got it to you. God is going to answer our prayers. We have to believe. We have to show up. And when the enemy wants to get us uh, 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 to default, line up whatever that issue is with the word of God. That's why you need to concentrate. That's why Jesus had that concentrated mix. Because on uh, slide, uh, the next five uh, slide, concentration, it means exclusive attention to a subject, a focused attention. In Matthew 6, Jesus had what I call as a, a, a the concentration mix. It was giving, it was um, praying, it was fasting, and it was worship. So this is going to be our power pack for the next 21 days. When Jesus taught on what it looked like to move away from the world and move closer to God, 
the first shift, the first thing that he taught about was on giving. And I know a lot of times in churches, we just think, oh, people just want you to come and get the money. You know, the church is just like anything else. It needs to operate. God has a plan for how that is to operate. Yes, we are to give. Yes, we are to give our tithes. But God is not legalistic. He's not going to beat your head over the, uh, beat you over the head with a hammer. He's just going to give you the path. And then you just work towards getting on that perfect path. But you have to, it's like a farmer. If a farmer ate all of his seeds, there is nothing to plant for the next harvest. So maybe for a time, you're full and you're happy and you're fat, but when it's all eaten, it's over. You planted nothing. You always have to plant something. If I have dimes and pennies in my purse. Whenever there's an opportunity to give, I put some seed in that. And if my best seed is a penny, I think I'm in good company. There's some scripture that talks about a widow who put, put a pence in, in offering. God will give, he will bless what you have. But if you eat all of your seed, there's nothing to sow. You've got to sow something. So Jesus started this mix with talking about giving. Remember, the pressure is off. Pastor Ron told us that. We're not trying to be legalistic. We're not trying to be hypocritical to say, oh, look at what I'm putting in the offering. This is about getting you in a position to have a harvest. This is time to be serious. And so when Jesus started in, in Matthew verses, uh, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, he, he instructed on giving. And when I was uh, preparing this message and the Lord began to show me that mix, he said he wanted us here at New Dawn to consecrate a $21 offering. $21, a dollar for every day of this first fruit of time that we're being set aside. $21 to bless the rest of the year. And I love God because I was like, okay, God, you know, for some people, 21 may, be, may, may break your back. But he, this isn't 2,100. This isn't even 210. God loves us enough to start us at a place where we can all participate. I love numbers. Uh, uh, seven is a number of completion, and, and, and 21 is three complete sevens. And when God reveals tr uh, truth in, in the Bible, he reveals it in threes, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And so all of these numbers are going through my head. And the Lord said, you can give a $21 one-time offering. This is an offering that's above and beyond your, your regular tithes and offerings and your regular giving. Or you can give three $7 offerings. So you can prepare. But what he wants you to do is to plant a seed so that you can have a harvest and be a part of this blessing and part of a concentrated mix of moving away from the world and growing closer to God. Jesus taught in Matthew 6, part of that is giving. And what the Lord put on my heart is that Today, starting today, if you got $21, put your $21 in. I, I had the heads up on y'all. I cheated a little bit because he told me this word a few days ago. So I came with my $21. But if you didn't come with your $21, put in what you can on the envelope. Mark that this is for your $21 first fruit seed offering. God wants to see your seriousness. If you got to do it in three sets of uh, uh, seven, whatever, just make sure you do your $21 offering. I'm only going to put on, to share with you what the Lord has shared with me. I'm so serious about this that I don't want to share a word without um, um, that permission of the house that I'm ministering in. And I spoke to Tracy about this, and I said, this is what the Lord is putting on my heart. Does this resonate with you? Is this is something that I can share with the people? Because I clearly know this is what God is saying. So part of what we're going to do is we're going to give a $21 offering above our normal uh, uh, tithes and offering. And however you can do that at once or over a three-week period, just make sure you cover the rest of the year. God's only asking for $21. I, I don't drink coffee, but I think that's probably about two cups of Starbucks coffee, okay, to cover the rest of the year. That's amazing shift our perspective. He's not breaking our back. 
He's just asking us to be serious and to line up with his word and to put yourself in a position of blessing. The second thing that Jesus taught on in that concentrated mix was on prayer. And there is an insert in your bulletin because the Lord put something specific on my heart about prayer. Remember I said numbers. There was a seven point prayer um, uh, points that the Lord said we are to pray for over the next 21 days. Do know that if you fast without prayer, you just got a really nice diet going on. You have a really nice modified food plan, food plan, but that is not fasting in prayer. Prayer has got to be a part of what you do. So we have a seven point prayer list. Uh, does anyone have one that was in the insert? I want to just hold it up. Yeah. The first, uh, Two items, because those of you who don't pray, and you're like, oh, Lord, I don't know seven things I'm going to pray about. God has already given you the first two, okay? So that's a good thing. The first two, if we are corporately coming together to pray for New Dawn Senior Pastor. We are going to come to before the Lord and beseech him on behalf of this congregation for the, the man of God that he is sending to shepherd this house. So how you are going to pray, that's between you and God. But we are corporately coming together. The second thing that the Lord put on my heart, and it was clear as day, is we are to cover Sister Bunny Wilson and, the, and her family. There is a cost of leadership. There is a cost to serve in the community, uh, to serve in, 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 the, in the church. We have got to make sure we cover our leaders. We have got to make sure, Sister Bunny, that you feel daily the prayers of the people going forth on your behalf and behalf of your family. And we are committing to that, that we are going to be praying for that. The third thing God said, don't, we're not going to make this a, a selfish fast. He's, he's going to bless self. He's going to bless us. But we got to pray for some other people as well. He said to put the name of at least one unsaved person that you know, not that your brother or your sister know, but that you know. And we're going to beseech heaven on behalf of that person, that the Lord would save that person and bring them into salvation. And the other four items are whatever it is that you need to ask God for for you. So you fill in those items. I'd already put mine on a post-it this morning so I could hear the God, God saying to me what my four items are. Know that prayerless saints are powerless saints. Prayerless saints are powerless saints. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. Let's not be a powerless faith body. Let's be a powerful people, power filled and fueled by prayer. Um, the next 21 days, like I said, we're going to engage in this corporate prayer. We're going to make sure you, we put it simple. You can put it in your Bible, put it in your purses. The other thing that God said to me is that expect to hear from him. Expect an answer to that prayer. In Daniel, he showed up and said, Daniel, I heard that prayer and answered it on the first day. But it took me 21 days to get to you. Know that in 21 days, the Lord is going to answer some prayers that you have. Part of answering those prayers and knowing that those prayers are answered is journaling, writing it out. Writing what the prayers are, writing what the answers are. The, now I want to, uh, I, I, God put on my heart to sow a seed of 21 uh, journals for people. I went to the store and bought 21 tablets yesterday. So that 21 people who are serious, really serious about praying and hearing from the Lord, I want you to raise your hands because I have something to put in your hand. So if you're serious, you want to hear from God, you're going to record what you hear, raise your hand, and they're going to put something in your hand. This is part of my seed. This is part of what I'm investing in you. I bought a, a journal for myself because I need to hear from God. I don't know about you, but I have got to get a shift. There's some things in my life that have got to change because I'm getting discouraged and I will not default. And so I need to hear from God. And so to prepare me to hear from God, I am writing. I'm spending the next 21 days doing something I've never done before because I'm expecting God to do something he's never done before. I uh, shift You've got to get that in your spirit. It's time to shift. There's some small white um, uh, tablets because God says this shift is for the family. 
And so for the kids, there's some little tablets. You can, if you, if you are going to join in the fasting by giving up soda or join in the fasting by giving up something, uh, uh, while you're giving up something and God is speaking to you, God wants a little tablet to give to each of you, to each of the kids as well, so that they can record what God has said to them. Expect. Remember, expect. The pastor said, y'all had 10 people at, at a revival because you set out 10 chairs. Is your expectation for 10 people or are you expecting the great? Do something you've never done before. And God will do something he's never done before. And so I challenge you to write that down and bring those in. And we have some time during the service, whether you want to, uh, if, you, if there's time, you can share. If you don't, you just need to be able to see for yourself what God is doing in your life. The third uh, area uh, that Jesus talked about in Matthew uh, 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 6 was on fasting. And again, a lot of people go straight into that focus of fasting. But when Jesus taught, he taught on giving, prayer, fasting, and worship. It's a power mix. It's a concentrated mix. So for this next 21 days, we're not only just fasting. We're not only just giving up some kind of food or some kind of drink. We are drawing close to God. We're saying no to something so we can say yes to him. And if that is going to be, you're, you're going to do a Daniel fast, great, do a Daniel fast. If that's going to be you give up coffee or you give up alcohol or you give up smoking or you give up weed or whatever it is that you got to give up, give it up. And yes, somebody needs to give up weed, okay? That, that's just for free. <laughs> and I don't want to step on anybody's feet, but many years ago, I'm 53 years old, but when, I, when God saved me, I needed saving. And one of the things I needed saving from was from weed. I told God I would serve him. I would do everything he needed me to do. But please don't take that away from me. Okay? I don't know how I thought I could negotiate on those terms. But praise God that he didn't answer that prayer. And that he freed me from the addiction of marijuana. I am so grateful and thankful. And I'm not shamed. Remember, we overcome the enemy with the words of our testimony. I shared this one day, and one night a young man came up to me after the prayer, and he says, I daily get high. I daily read the word of God. And I fill my mind and my head and my lungs with weed. And what you said, that encouraged me. Because if he could do that for you, I know he can do that for me. We overcome the enemy with the words of our testimony. I am grateful the Lord took that out of my life. And so whatever it is that you have to give up, give up because he's going to replace it with something greater. Do it just for 21 days. He ain't asking us to do this forever. He's saying set aside the first fruit of 21 days so that the rest of the year is blessed. What are the odds on that? I'm giving you 21 days and you're giving me 340? I'm willing to take that, Lord. Sign me up for that program. And so whatever you have to give up, I swear to you, I've never given up potatoes for 21 days. I'm a little worried about this. But I only have to do it 24 hours at a time. Today, I don't have to have some Lay's potato chips. Today, I don't have to have some hash browns. Today, I don't have to have mashed potatoes. Today. Now, I don't know about tomorrow. We're going to pray about uh, tomorrow. I'm 21 days. I'm going to do what I've never done. But whatever that thing is, remember, you only have to do it 21, 24 hours at a time. 21 days will be to feed it 24 hours at a time. Know that you can do it. We're praying for one another, not only just for ourselves, we're praying for one another. And the last mix of this that uh, Jesus talked about was on worship. I'm going to begin to draw us to close with that word. Jesus, uh, when you look at ch uh, verse um, uh, chapter 6, the, the whole latter part of, of that chapter talks about worry. Uh, worry of things from the world and 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 Jesus had an answer for our worry it was to replace worry with worship the atmosphere shifts when you change from your worry to your worship worry and worship can't exist in the same place at the same time 
Sometimes I just when I'm when I'm going through, I keep praise music on my uh, my tele my my Cyrus radio uh, uh, station in my house. I'll put it on in the family room. I'll put it on in my room. I want my house even when I'm not there. I left it on when I left this morning. I want my house. I want the atmosphere to be shifted by worship, shifted by praise. Even when I'm not there, it's at work because I can't worry and worship at the same time. I refuse to default. I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse to focus my attention on earthly manners. I'm going to replace that with worship. And so as you have taken some things out of your diet, as you're taking some things out of your time, replace your TV time with worship time. Replace your social media time with praise time. And if you praise and worship is not my gift. God, I make a joyful noise that's just a joyful noise. But there are I, I set the atmosphere with those people who are gifted with praise and worship. If that's your calling, let it flow from your mouth. But is it, if it isn't, get a radio station, get Pandora, get Pandora, get whatever you need to do to set your atmosphere with praise and worship. Worry and worship cannot coexist. So as we launch into this time of consecration and concentration, as we draw close to God, as we purify our hearts, as we say a, a quiet yes to God and a loud no to some foods and to some things that we do with our time, as we give our $21 first fruit uh, offering, as our seed offering, the Lord would bless our resources, that he would give, bring forth a great harvest in this season of greatness, as we cry out our eyes before God with our seven-point prayer list, as we get rid of worry and get serious, family, really serious, God is going to show up. He's going to show out. The word was deposited in this house to prepare for greatness. God doesn't waste his words. He doesn't waste his words. Prepare for greatness. Greatness is in you. Spend time in the word so that when your circumstances and your realities and your facts start whooping your butt, line it up with the word of God. Know that God is fighting on your behalf. No, it came to pass to prepare you for the path of greatness that the Lord has prepared for each and every one of us. I'm excited about this fast family. I'm excited about the shift. I'm excited about doing something. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That is worth clapping for. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. Worship. Hallelujah. Shift the atmosphere. Shift out the doubt. Shift out the, I don't see it happening, Lord. Shift out, I can't do anything for 21 days. Shift it out with the worship. We're doing this 24 hours at a time. You shall not be defeated. You shall not default. God is on our side. He fought that prince of Persia for 21 days to bring the answer that he had already answered at the top of the 21 days. So thank you, Lord. The answer is already here today. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Answer is already here today. You write out your, your, your seven-point prayer list. Answer is already here today. Thank you, Lord, for pastor. He's already here. He's already here. He's already here. Thank you, Lord, for pastor. I'm just, I'm just keeping this warm. I'm just keeping it warm, getting it ready, because he's already here. He's already here. God's just fighting the opposition on our behalf. Get it in your spirit. Get it in your heart. It's time to prepare for greatness, New Don. I love the Nike thing. It says, just do it. Just do it. It's no more, it, just do it. It's not, I gotta wait. I gotta get it. Just do it. Just trust God. 
Just believe that he will do something he's never done before. When you do something you've never done before, just do it. Just do it. That's all I got. Just do it. Just do it. Glory to your name. Thank you for Pastor Lord. He's already here. He's already here. He's already here. Thank you, Lord, for the man of God. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the shepherd, Lord, that you're sent. That you, he's already here. He's already here. Thank you for the prayers that are already covering every need Sister Bunny has. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every unsaved person that's being written on that note, on that card. Thank you for their salvation. It's already done. Just got to fight that opposition for us, Lord. And your servant will show up with an answer. Just do it, family. Just do it. I'm going to close this out here with a time of prayer. I want everybody under the sound of my voice to bow your heads and close your eyes. This is a time of consecration between you and the Lord. And I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you for your word of instruction. Thank you for your word of encouragement. Thank you for your word of help and your word of hope. Lord, help us, your people, to grab hold of it. The enemy's going to come and try to snatch this word out. The word, word says that th there's four kinds of soils, and only one, one fourth of those soil is good soil. It said the word is choked out by the worries of the world. The word is choked out because there's no root. Lord, let your people grab hold of this word. Let us be the 25% of good soil. Let it not be choked out by the worries and the concerns. Let us replace our worry with worship. Help us to make room for the greater that you have prepared for each and every one of us. We're not here by accident. We are here on assignment. If you are here under the sound of my voice, whether you believe it or want it or not, you have been prepared for greatness in 2014. Get ready. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. And so, Lord, help us to make room for the greater that lies ahead for us. And that first step we took was the shift to say we're ready. The next step, Lord, is to make sure that we know, that we know, that we know, that we know, that we know we're connected to you because you are the source of all greatness.